Welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we create a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. In today's episode, we'll start working on the time clock page. So now we'll head over to that time clock page, which will be the first page when you go to the dashboard. So let's go ahead and close everything we have open right now. So close all documents and then we'll open up the time clock page model and the time clock page. With time clock page open, we can start creating our view for our page. So we want a rather large header up top and it's going to contain the timer clock itself as well as a label to indicate when you clocked in and a button that you can click to clock in and out. So we can start with a, a stack layout by itself inside of the stack layout because this will hold those views and then we can set its background color to something different than the rest of them. So we'll just use a stack layout here and just for now, let's do a background color of something light, like a light blue is fine. And now in here, we want a label for the running timer. So let's just use a label and its text will be bound to the page models uh, running total. We'll want another label to let the user know um, if they're clocked in, when they clocked in. So we'll say label and its text can be binding current start time and we can give this a string format. In this format, we wanna add some text in front of the, the time. So we're going to say, you clocked in at, and then we can just use the, the start time. And then we can end that label. We'll also want a button. So we'll call it button. Text will be a binding clock in button. because this will change from clock in to clock out and back based on whether they're clocked in or they're clocked out. So we can bind this to the page model and then we can close that button. And then we want another stack layout to kind of be the header for the list, but we want it to be in this main header. So we can make another stack layout. And in here, we want this to be a horizontal stack layout. So we'll just say orientation horizontal and then we can provide three labels. We'll have a start, an end, and a total. So we can make a label, its text will be start, and its horizontal options will be fill and expand. We'll do another one, label text equals end, horizontal options fill and expand again. And then we want a total, label text equals total, horizontal options equals fill and expand. So under the stack layout for the, the header, so the light blue stack layout, we can use a list. So list view, and we'll, we'll add some attributes to that in a moment. Um, but we have our list view and we need to give it an item source. So we can say item source. And then this will be bound to something. Let's call them work items is fine. It'll be some kind of list. Um, or observable collection. So list view, item source, and then we are bound to work items. And we also want to provide some kind of data template to say how these need to look. And so we could do that by saying list view dot item template. And then this will be a data template and a view cell. So inside this view cell, we can add, start adding our, our actual view and this will be a stack layout and its orientation will be horizontal. And it's going to pretty much mimic this, except instead of start and total, it'll be those actual times. So work items could have properties such as start, end, and total, which we can do. So let's go ahead and add those. So we can just copy and paste this. So we'll copy the stack layout, orientation equals horizontal, and those three labels, and we'll paste them over this stack layout. So it'll replace this one. And instead of text being start, we're gonna say binding start. And then instead of text being end, we'll say binding end. And then the same thing for total. And then at the bottom of the page, we might want some kind of indicator of how much money the user has earned today, because this page is a running total of today. And maybe they want to know how much they've earned today based on how much they've worked. So we can do that by dropping down a couple lines after the list view. We can add a stack layout here and give it its own background color. And let's just call this one light blue as well is fine. And then inside this stack layout, add a label. 
and its text will be bound to maybe a property called today's earnings. And then we can give it a string format as well and just let them know earnings today, earnings today. And then we'll use a colon uh, and then just put the, the property there. And then we want this one to be horizontal options is center just so it looks a little better. We're gonna make all of these um, styled after we lay them out, but for now we're just laying out the views. And now we need to create these binded properties. So we can do that. Um, I'm just going to drag down the page model and put it right next to it, so side by side. And we can just start from the top. So our first one's gonna be running total, and running total is going to be a time span, which means we're gonna to have to go back into our view and add some kind of a string format so that it can parse into a string. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and say time span, running total, and then public time span, running total. And when we get, we'll just return the private member running total. And when we set, we will use our set property method and we'll reference running total and we'll pass in value. Current start time is going to be a date time so that we can just, when the user clicks, we can just use date time dot now and we can parse it as we need to. So this will be date time. And then we will use an underscore and say current start time. And then we need a public variant, so public date time, current start time. And then we can just use get current start time and set, set property, reference our current start time, and pass in value. Our next one is the clock in button text. Let's skip that one for now because we're going to come back and create a, a bindable model for the button which will control its text and everything about it, enabled, visible, all that stuff. Um, and that is uh, pretty beneficial later on. So we're gonna come back to that, but let's get the rest of these. So work items is going to be some kind of a list of these models. So we need to make the model. So let's head over to our model folder. Let's right click, add class. We'll just call it work item. And work item can be public and it needs those three properties. So we can just say P-R-O-P, prop, tab, tab, which will make this templated property. And so start time is going to be a date time. And we'll just call this start. And we'll do prop again, date time, and this will be end. And then total, but total's not gonna be settable. We're just gonna make it something you can get, and it's gonna return the difference between start and end. So. Uh, and it's going to be a time span. So public time span total. And then we can just get and it'll be end minus start. And that'll return the time span difference, which will give us days, hours, minutes, seconds. So every time you get total, it'll just show you the difference between end and start. So now that we have that, we can close that and we definitely want to save. And now we can make our observable collection. So we'll make an observable collection of work items, singular work item, and we'll call it underscore work items. And then we can use public observable collection work item, and this can be called work items. And then the same thing, get will be work items and set will use set property, reference our work items and pass in value. The next thing we need to do is create this total earnings label text. So um, this can be a double or a float. So we can just use double. So double today's earnings with an underscore because this is the private member and then public double today's earnings and get will just be uh, today's earnings, the private member, and set will be set property, referencing the private member and passing in value. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is create that button model. And that button model will be kind of a view model for a button. So let's go over to view models. And let's right click and add a new folder. And we'll call this buttons. And then in here, we can add a new class and it will be button model. And now we also want that set property method. What we need to do is create this extended bindable object 
make it extend bindable object, and then just cut that set property method out of page model base and paste it into here. And then once, once that's done, we can change page model base to extended bindable object as its ex extension. And then we can go ahead and get rid of this um, set property. But before I do, I'm going to bring over this comment and I'm gonna put it inside of here so that we still have a comment in, above set property. And then I'll go ahead and delete the whole method out of here. Since page model base is extending extended bindable object, then we still have this set property method, but now our button model can do the same. So we can just extend extended bindable object. And now we have access to that set property. And so button models uh, need to be able to bind to a couple properties of a button. So let's go ahead and make a button in views. So in views, right click, add new folder, and this will be buttons. And then in buttons, add new item. And this is going to be a content view, which will end in .xaml or XAML. And we'll just call this bindable button. And so now we have this bindable button, but it's a content view. So we're going to go ahead and change that to button. And we can get rid of everything below its class declaration, including that right arrow. And then we'll press the slash and make a new right arrow. So this closes the element. We can save that. And then we need to open the code behind. And instead of it bindable button extending from content view, we are going to change this to button. And then when we save, and now we can, we can actually bind to properties. So we want our button's text to be bound to binding text. We want is visible to be bound to binding is visible. We want enabled is enabled bound to binding is enabled and there's a pattern here I'm, I'm sure you're picking up on that is enabled and then we need to bound bind to a command and that'll be binding command is easy so now we can head back over to the button model and we're going to make text is visible is enabled and command so we can jump back here and we can say string text and public string text and this will get which will return the private member text and set will use our set property method referencing text and pass in value. We'll do the same thing for the two booleans. So bool is visible and public bool is visible. And the get will return the same thing and set will set the same thing. And then we'll do the same for enabled. And so once you've completed the two booleans, you should have something that looks like this. And then we need the same thing for the command, which we can just make it an I command. And this will just be command. And then we'll make the public variant. And then you should have this. And now we'll make a constructor for our button model. And this thing, this constructor is going to have a couple parameters that we'll require. We'll start with our two required, which will be the title and the command. So we can do string title and I command command. And then we can make default parameters on the on the others. So we have is visible, we can assume is true and is enabled, we can assume is true. So we can say bool is visible equals true and bool is enabled equals true. And then we can go ahead and set these to our bindable properties. So we can say text equals title. We can say command equals command and do the same for is visible and is enabled. We also might want to just pass in an action. So we can say public button model and it'll be typically the same. So string title. Uh, let's go ahead and call it text. String text action action and then we'll also do the bool is visible equals true and bool is enabled equals true and so text will be text still 
But command will just be new command, which comes from Xamarin Forms, and we'll just pass in the action. And then we can do the same for is visible and is enabled. So is visible equals is visible and is enabled equals is enabled. Okay, so there's two different ways to initialize our button model. So this is good. And so we'll save and we can close. We're done with that. And we're done with this bindable button. So we can close that as well. We've bound to all of these. So we can close that. We can close the button model code behind the extended bindable object and the page model base. And now we're back at the time clock page. And that's where we'll end today's video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. This is Patrick from the Let's Create series, and we'll see you next time.